The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets in the red to kick things off. Strong numbers from Google last night, but we got some mixed numbers elsewhere. You're talking about AMD trading lower dramatically, Eli Lilly trading lower dramatically, weight loss drugs. What's happening there? We'll get into it. But this morning, you got the S&Ps negative by $7, seven points, trading at 58.63. NASDAQ 100. Trading right now off about 45 points, 20,653. The Dow in the red by 70 points, or about two tenths percent, 42,378. And you got the Russell, negative by nine at 2241. Bitcoin, how about yesterday, right? Almost makes it to 75,000. All time highs for Bitcoin yesterday. You see that acceleration? We're off that price level a bit today. We're trading down $700. Crude. Up a dollar, sitting at 68.22, off of the lows of 66.72 just yesterday. How about that gold contract, folks? Have you ever heard of 2800 for the price of gold? Well, you heard it this morning, never before. All-time highs yet again in gold, trading up $14 at 27.95. Notes and bonds, up three ticks, technically is the number right there. We're trading at 110.27 in the 10-year. The 30-year is up 16 ticks right now. You're talking about a 10-year yield at about 4.25%. Now, the 10-year, we were approaching 4.32 almost yesterday, 4.28. In the end of the day, we're a little bit higher price, lower yield from there, but pretty remarkable where we are on that level. To say the least, right? You got to jump over the dollar index, DXY. We get the 10-year at 4.25%. The dollar sitting at 104.36%. You got to keep talking about it, man. Remarkable. Take that off. That was yesterday's. We've been shopping around at this level for about a week, right? 104.50, 104.36. This is kind of the area that was the consolidation back in early July. But no matter what the dollar does right now, the gold contract just goes up. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, it's just... Uh, it's just that simple, folks. No matter what the dollar does, it just goes up. You back it up to February, we're at 2,000. It's been a one-way run. You consolidated for a few months between 2,300 and 2,400. The second leg of this began about July 25th. Maybe you could call it August 6th. And yeah, it's been a straight shot, and it's not slowing down gold right now. Trading at 27.96, up another $15. Remarkable. You jump over to the VIX, volatility index. Now, we got a lot of volatility, right? We're coming into, we got some ADP private payrolls this morning, but you have tomorrow, Fed's preferred inflation gauge, PCE. Friday, non-farm payrolls. Tuesday, the election. Thursday, a Federal Reserve rate decision. And what are they going to say? The market has pushed back severely over the cuts that they had priced in initially following the last Federal Reserve meeting when Chairman Powell seemed like he was ready to bring it, but that doesn't seem what's happening like what's happening right now, as in rates higher, maybe rates higher for longer. We're at a much more reasonable stance, though, right now, in my opinion, in terms of Can you hear me? Did we hear any of that? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Could we hear any of that in the beginning, Al? Or did you miss all of me there? Hopefully you heard me. Yes. Okay, good. It just got hit. Uh, all right. We jump to Super Microcomputer. What's going on here? Uh, the news just breaking. As we speak, their auditor has resigned. Watch out for this one, folks. Super microcomputer, the auditor resigns after raising concerns month or months earlier. 
That's the headline right there. And yes, uh, that just hit the tape. We're down to $35. The last thing you ever want to find out, folks, is that the numbers are meaningless in terms of where they've been reporting. And uh, yeah, you better watch out, man. Yeah, super microcomputer, super fraud. Maybe. I like it, Z. Um, boy, you know, you hope you hope not for the investors in this because that's not what you want to hear, that they've been fixing the numbers. But anytime you got an auditor saying, I'm out of here, I've told you your numbers are junk, they're not even real. And yeah, that's what's going on. All right, let's get back to the meat of this market. And that is the Magnificent Seven. And Google kicked it off yesterday, and they did it with a bang to the upside. They crushed it, man. They crushed it everywhere. All right, Google, you're up by about $12 right now. You're going to get a pop to 182.96. You're going to get a pop on the other equities as well, right? When they're crushing it in the cloud, look at Amazon. You're going to be up by almost $4 to 194 for Amazon shares this morning. Everything's getting a little. Apple, not quite the same deal, but you jump over to Microsoft shares and they're higher as well. When you talk about what? You talk about Google in their cloud, you talk about Amazon, you talk about AWS, you talk about Microsoft, Azure, and yeah, Microsoft up another $8, pushing 439 this morning. Highs recently at 468 for Microsoft. And then you jump over to MetaShares this morning and they're up by about ten dollars as well pushing 603 is that going to be an all-time high i think it is that's going to be an all-time high on the open from meta at 603 we jump over to google shares they're going to open up at 183 you're about ten dollars off their highs and yeah you jump over to amazon and they're pushing the all-time high at 201 one recently you got to go back to google shares we take a look at it and let's jump over to their numbers man so how about cloud revenue of $11.35 billion, up 35%. 35%. I think they rose 28% in the quarter previously. Now they're up 35%. So they're, they're accelerating growth in this. And you look at it across the board, right? YouTube advertising, they beat, but barely, but they still beat 8.92 versus 8.89. Google Cloud revenue, they crushed it 11.35 versus 10.88. Traffic acquisition costs, a little bit higher, 13.72, but their revenue grew 15% year over year, stronger than the same quarter a year ago. And that cloud revenue, man, 35%. And I'm pretty sure I saw the number earlier, I was reading articles, that that number is up even from like 28%, I think the prior quarter, if I'm if I recall correctly. Net income, 26.3 billion. Now here's where it gets interesting. OK, they got a lot of growth priced in and they should when you're talking about a company that's grown cloud revenue with 35 percent. They're making two dollars a share a quarter. OK, you multiply that times four for the year and maybe they're making eight dollars a year. Stock's still trading at one hundred and eighty dollars. There's a lot of growth priced into this. Rightfully so. When you're growing cloud at thirty five percent and you're taking twenty six billion dollars to the bottom line remarkable man you look at the numbers i mean think of it revenue is 88 and they take 26 to the bottom line but they beat 88.27 billion is the revenue they were looking for 86.3 and earnings they beat it 2.12 uh yeah big numbers across the board ai the big number there for sure advertising revenue 65.85 billion up from 59.65 i mean you can these are just remarkable numbers man we'll talk a little bit more about it we haven't even finished google numbers yet and then you got microsoft and meta tonight we got to talk about eli Lilly in a moment the weight loss drugs they aren't selling they got a demand problem we got a lot to talk about folks stay tuned i'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets slightly in the red this morning. Google driving AI when you're talking about cloud, advertising, wherever you are, right? Search across the board, YouTube, all higher, all beating the market. Google going to pop to about 183. You got Amazon shares. They're going to be up by about $4. Now, we have Microsoft and Meta after the bell today. Microsoft, of course. Pressure is going to be on them as they're up $10. What happened to Azure? I'm sure they're doing well if Google's doing well. And you also get Meta. After the bell today, Meta going to open at an all-time high, looking at 604.21. And then we get Apple and Amazon on Thursday. Pretty interesting that Apple isn't in that business, right? As in, you look at the pops you get on Google, Amazon, Microsoft. Where's Apple, man? They could be in that business. It's not their business. I get it. But pretty remarkable when you're in the context of the company and the size they are. Nonetheless, Apple, negative this morning with the market. Jumping back briefly to the Google story real quick. Just to finish up, oh, that's not where we were. Where were we? There we go. Just to finish it up, you're talking about whether it's different parts of that company, which are tiny compared to the company that it is, but you have a company like Waymo, okay? They're bringing in 400 million almost in the third quarter, up by 297 million a year ago. Yeah, last week they closed a $5.6 billion funding round. You got Google Lens, all right? Now used... 20 billion visual searches per month. These numbers are just startling when you look at that, right? So Google, they're going to get a pop, to put it lightly. All right, we got news all over the place, man. Where are we going to go? Let's go to the economy first. Okay, we got economy. We got GDP. 
We got private payrolls. You got huge earnings. I mean, it is just nonstop for the next week, man. And so far, we're off to a good start with Google. Now, AMD is dragging things down. We'll get into that in a moment as well. It's going to be an action-packed show. And don't forget, we got our man Teddy Kegstat coming up at 40 past the hour. Always a good conversation with him. Consumer spending was a big number. The economy expands at a 2.8% rate for the quarter, in the third quarter, that is. We had a trade deficit. That was dragging things down. But you had inflation adjusted. GDP increased at 2.8, annualized after rising 3% in the previous quarter. The market was looking for 2.9, so a little bit lower than what they were looking for. Consumer spending, though, man, which compromises the largest share, up 3.7%, the most since early 2023. Then you have the underlying inflation coming in at 2.2. Chairman Powell enjoys that as he's going to take the stage eight days from right now on November 7th for the Fed. But yeah, um, and this is the one that brought it down. You had GDP in the third quarter restrained by a volatile trade figures. Net exports subtracted almost half a percentage point from the top line. Do you hear that? Net exports subtracted. Retailers stepped up imports of consumer goods as the quarter drew to a close on fears of a lingering dock worker strike. Inventory subtracted almost two-tenths percentage there is the number. Yeah. Business spending. Non-residential fixed income investment rose at 0.3, uh, excuse me, 3.3% annualized. Throwing a lot of numbers at you, I know, but they're all out there. Yeah. Residential investment declined at an annualized 5.1%. The most since the end of 2022 is the housing market struggled on the weight of high mortgage rates, man. Where's the Fed to cut? Right? I kid. But it's all in there, man. They all matter. All right. Let's jump to private payrolls. 233,000 in October above all forecasts. Now, that is a precursor to the non-farm payroll numbers that we get on Friday. And, yeah, this is when we had to deal with the hurricanes. So you got a lot of volatility, especially in certain states, Florida being one of them. Many others, though, up the East Coast especially for that first storm, Melton. And then you got Helene hitting us on the second go-around in Florida especially. Wage growth slowed to paces last seen in 2021. But look at these numbers still. Workers who changed jobs, 6.2%. If you stayed in the same job, 46 the compounding going on right now, okay? Everybody talks about, man, these rates are so high. Oh, my goodness. And they, uh, excuse me, prices, they are so high, okay? But it is remarkable, folks. If you've been listening to the program for an extended period of time, make sure my mic's not muted. These numbers are getting compounded, man. Now, these numbers were bonkers early on. I think somewhere in these, and when inflation was popping at 8 9 10%, um, I can't recall. Maybe somebody in the den. What does these numbers look like? Wasn't it something like if you change jobs, it was like 16% pay increase. If you stayed the same job, it was like an 8% pay increase. You're still getting a 4.6% pay increase staying in the same job. That's inflationary. That is a lag. And that is an inflationary force that the Fed is going to have to deal with, man. ADP, yeah, you got 25 million U.S. private sector employees. Okay. So... We're going to see what happens on Friday, but big numbers there. And yes, slowed to paces last seen in 2021. Folks, those are good numbers, man. You know, you change a job, you're up 6.2. You stayed in the same job, you're up 4.6. And that's off the numbers that you were dealing with a year ago, which are elevated from the years prior, obviously. All right, how about Eli Lilly? Now, check out this one. This is going to be dicey, folks. If you're in Eli Lilly, be careful. Okay, because you had almost a 50% run-up this year, something like that, right? You were at 575, almost more than that even. Look at it. Now, nah, 600 to 900, so about a 50% run. That's following, what, almost 100% run the prior year. You're going to open at about $800, critical level, okay? Look at where we are. We're going to open at about $800. If you break through 800, where are you going? Well, 750 is easy. But there's just this consolidation but around 750, around 800. You break through there, you're going back to 600, man. That's it. Simple. There's nothing in the way of where you're going, okay? But you do have this big volume bar, that acceleration from a quarter ago. But you're going to take it all back right now on this. And it's a startling revelation. I was reading this one early in the morning. Now, they cut the top of the full year sales guidance by 600 million. But I think that number is still 46 billion, is something like that. So they go from, yeah, it is. There it is, right? 
They had raised their guidance twice this year. They now expect full year sales to top out at 46 billion. They were looking for 46.6 billion. Not in not not a dramatic revision, but expectations are sky high when you're a stock like this. The biggest one though is, okay, the dramatic miss of what is supposed to be the future promise of some of these companies and that is these weight loss drugs, the GLP weight loss drugs, okay? They had sales of 1.26 billion. They were looking for 1.63. Folks, they missed by 25%, okay? Now that's for Zepound. Monjaro, a different brand of the same drug used for diabetes, 3.11 billion, missing 3.62, okay? Again, that's a 15% miss. And it is remarkable that they basically sell the same drug for different things. That's a whole different conversation. Nonetheless, that's where it is. This is a demand problem. The reason why they sold less drugs is that their wholesalers were just churning through inventory that they already had, okay? Yeah, we're gonna talk about this when we get back, but that is a problem. The whole promise of these companies in terms of stock growth was they couldn't even keep up with demand. Well, now what is the story? The demand is so light that we got a bunch of supply that we gotta churn through. We got a lot to talk about. We'll come back for the opening bell, folks. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. That last sip of coffee before these markets open. Getting ready, and we get the S&Ps slightly in the red by about seven points right now. We're trading at 58.63 blowout numbers from Google. We check in on their open, and yeah, they're even higher. 7.3% for Google to the upside of $12 right now. We jump over to the Analyze tab, and you're talking about a company valued at $2.25 trillion for Google this morning. We jump over to Microsoft. Ooh, okay, what's going on there? Looks like the market's saying, what have you done for me lately? You got you to gotta prove it this afternoon from Microsoft shares. We jump over to Meta. They give it back as well. Amazon, not so much the case. Amazon holding on to those gains on strong Google numbers. Amazon up by about 2% right now. You jump over to Eli Lilly. Yeah, you're at 799. So jumping back to the story for Eli Lilly shares, okay? Yeah, here we go, right? Lilly's success story has been driven by demand vastly exceeding supply for the Majaro Zeppon franchise. So a sales miss of almost a billion dollars as supply constraints begin to lift may drive major uncertainty on the outlook. Okay, that puts it lightly. And what they talk about here is the destocking, the idea that wholesalers were selling existing inventory in the third quarter rather than buying and selling even more of the company's drugs. That is a problem, folks. Okay. They blame the misses on an inventory issue saying wholesale, that's not an inventory issue, that's a demand issue, okay? Wholesalers had a lot of drug in stock at the end of the second quarter, causing them to sell less in the third quarter. Now, if they had a ton of inventory at the end of the second quarter, okay? Now, I'm just bringing this full circle because I was looking at this in the morning. That's the end of the second quarter, folks. They came out with their numbers. They were great. You know why they were great? because the wholesalers stocked up way more money, way more inventory than they needed. They had so much inventory that they didn't need to buy any in the third quarter. I'm exaggerating. You get the point, right? We wipe out that whole quarter, but I'd say you don't even deserve to trade higher over this quarter if that's the case, because these numbers were padded in, the, in that quarter from August. Because why were they padded? Well, they overstocked. They oversupplied. They had too much supply for a demand problem that wasn't as strong of a demand as they were thinking yeah so i'd be careful even at 796 folks you're still up by what you know you started the year at 587 still beating the market to some degree and that's falling 100 percent earlier but there is growth like we've almost never seen in some of these drugs priced in i mean you talk about some of the the numbers that they put in here so 130 billion somewhere right yeah the market for weight loss treatments will reach 130 billion by 2030 is the number they're looking for and it very well may going out six years is impossible almost when you're talking about forecast etc but revenue from all products was 11.4 billion and they missed the 12.2 huge misses across the board for a company that is supposed to be probably beating they had raised expectations the last two quarters you're supposed to under promise and over deliver is the way you do it and that's not the case man going on right there all right, what else do we got going on? Let's jump around. How about a little mortgage demand? This one's not surprising, man. We were all getting ready for the Fed, and they're going to cut, folks. It's just going to take a lot longer. To refinance, drop 6%. To purchase a home, increase 5%. The 30-year mortgage rate, though, 6.73 from 6.52. Now, let me tell you, folks, okay, because... As I'm getting a lay of the land, more so than usual, of you know the real estate arm of what my dad was dealing with here, these numbers, you can bring them down a lot on a certain level. Okay, The average contract interest rate, yeah, it's high. It's probably a six, but you're really not dealing with 6.8 right now. Okay, um, You got points in there. Okay, Points rising to 0.69 from 0.464. That includes the origination fee. But yeah, you, you got big numbers, and that puts it lightly. We got the tenure at about four and a quarter percent this morning. Look at Lily, it's keeping dropping. Yeah, get out of Lily if you're in there. Okay, in the long term, you want to hold this thing till 2030? Yes, you make some money. There's a lot of growth built into that equity, though. You have to exceed expectations, folks. Are they exceeding expectations? I don't think so this morning. Uh, we got the tenure up about seven ticks right now. We're yielding almost four and a quarter percent. We check back in on the dollar index, DXY. Just chopping around, 104 and change on the dollar index. And we check back in on that gold contract, man. 
We pull back from the 2801 price point. We're trading at 2703. We're flat on the session almost. We're positive by $2, but gold continuing to trade with force to the upside. All right, we talked about GDP, private payrolls. Let's check back in on Super Microcomputer as they are driving the action right now, down 32%. And yeah, it's Ernst & Young was the one, the auditor. Not just an auditor, you know, one of the big auditors. It makes sense, I guess, but they're out of there. They had raised the alarms a couple months ago, and it looks like they're just not comfortable with the numbers they're seeing. They're out. You're down by 33% right now for Super Microcomputer out there. All right, we check in on AMD. On their numbers, down 9% for AMD. You trade from 169 down to 150. We take a look at this chart. And yeah, not, not dramatic in terms of the volatility. You were at 227. We were as low as almost 120 back in August. You're trading at 150. But yeah, they miss as well in pretty dramatic. And you see if that is going to carry over to the likes of NVIDIA right now. Down by 1.5%. Make it 1.6 for NVIDIA. And we check back in on Google shares. Holding on to those gains, up by about 6% right now, but pretty interesting in terms of Microsoft, barely flat. I mean, they got the Azure, right? If Google's crushing it, if Amazon's up by 2.25% right now, you got to wait on Microsoft. Yeah, only up by 6 tenths percent. And Meta, in similar fashion, trades lower on the open. They're flat right now at 5.94 for Meta shares. All right. We jump around to some other. I mean, it's an awesome week, man. I think we have like half of the S&P 500 companies reporting over the next 10 days when we kicked off this week. You add that into private payrolls, as I mentioned, right? PCE, jobs numbers, an election, and a Federal Reserve decision. Has it ever come like that? Think of the volatility priced into this market. You got Biogen, okay? Tops estimates raises our guidance as their Alzheimer's drug gains traction. You got to like that, man. They have a new rare disease and depression treatment. Biogen adjusted earnings at about 16 to 1660. They up both portions, the bottom and the top end of the range there. And yeah, they talk about that Alzheimer's drug. They're only bringing in 67 million in sales in the third quarter, 39 million from the U.S., but that was looking at maybe 50 million is the number. So they beat. They beat on the top line. They beat on the bottom line. Earnings at 408. And we pull up Biogen. B-I-I-B -I -I -B is their symbol. Whoops. B-I-I-B. -I -I -B. There we go. And you're down about 5 tenths percent for Biogen. A little bit of volatility, but pretty calm action. Down about a dollar. And check out the Russell getting in the positive there. i am pop on the open. You know, it is interesting. Google crushes it. But you have so much divergence right now. We jump around to a company like AMD, down almost 10%. Google's in the positive. I just told you Microsoft and Meta gave it up a bit on the open. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there. All right, folks. We're going to be coming back. We're going to be talking with our man, Teddy Kegstad. And boy, this is going to be a good one. We got a lot to talk about. Yields, the dollar, currencies. We got everything, man. We'll talk even. We got a little bit of German inflation out there. We'll be right back with Teddy, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets trailing off a bit. S&P is now down about 21 points, trading at 58.50. But we're going to talk a little bit of currencies. We're going to talk a little bit of commodities. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, outstanding time to do it with everything going on. You can head on over to the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. You'll see that newsletter, Tiger Forex Report. You can sign up, $97. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. Nothing to lose. And then you jump over to the Services tab. If you, you know, you $97 for these webinars, folks. Outstanding webinars talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Strategies with our man Teddy. Teddy Kegstack. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. So. Do we have enough going on in this market this weekend next, Teddy? Uh, we definitely have a lot of uh, news events, that's for sure, starting with tomorrow with the uh, unemployment claims, and then uh, Friday is the big day with the unemployment number and the PMI as well. Uh, and then, of course, next week we got an election. we got a Federal Reserve meeting. Um, what do you think about, let's just kick it off with yields, driving the dollar, of course, and driving you know a lot of the action. We've been mm -hmm. talking about it. I know that we're, you know, on the same page to a certain degree in terms of man, the 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 market getting a little bit over over its skis with the amount of cuts it had priced in about six weeks ago. We're now sitting with a ten year at about four and a quarter percent. The dollar been so strong recently above one oh four. What do you think about the general moves with yield and the dollar as we come into, you know, the election and just another Federal Reserve meeting and just kind of the repricing of some of that debt? Sure, sure. Well, that's why I think tomorrow's uh, unemployment claims and Friday's unemployment number are going to be a big things for the Fed to be watching because, remember, they want higher unemployment. And if it starts ticking downward, which is the way it seems to be doing, it starts to put a little bit of a stranglehold on their cutting rates theory because, you know, that means either they – started too early or they like you and I both kind of were on the same page that they probably should have done a quarter point the last meeting and do a quarter point this meeting you know the market already factored in every bit of a half a point cut you know so now the question is if these numbers keep tracking back to where they were and they're not getting better you know maybe what we did was just have a slight little pull back relief if you will remember inflation hasn't gone away it's just not as accelerating at the rate that it was it's still accelerating you know so and uh you have like you were talking about wages earlier and others there's other things that are inflationary so if that's the case 
you know, that the whole cutting bias starts to start to question, like, even if they cut next week, which they probably will, will cut one more quarter point tomorrow or not. I mean, not tomorrow, next week. Um, I would be very shocked if they did a half a point. I mean, I was surprised last time about the half a point. But I think with the way the numbers are tracking that it, it doesn't make sense because now it starts to go against their narrative. If the, it's, Then it really is like, what are you doing here? Because it, it really doesn't make – they should have already been cutting either earlier, you know, or – um, their whole narrative is just they're just going against it for other reasons, which they could be just to prop up the bond market. I don't know, you know. So, um, but you can see by the spread between, you know, after all, the Fed cut a half a point last month, and look at where rates are at. You know, I mean, we have yields that have been nothing but going up since they they uh, cut the rate. You know, so even if we see a yeah. pullback, you know, a rally, you know, in the 10 year and the 30 year, which is very likely, you know, and I would say you're probably not going to see much of a move until sometime after tomorrow's number into Friday's numbers. And then I would say Monday, Tuesday, you know, it's going to be a very bit much of a flat line trade. You know, um, like you, you mentioned uh, the German numbers and what have you. Like, I think that the whole world is waiting on our election. You know, because it, it's significant which which way this election swings, you know. So and especially yes. when you have the German economy that's collapsing. I mean, Volkswagen just announced they're closing three plants, um, which has never happened in their whole history. You know, not to mention they're cutting back workforce at other plants. You know, yeah. I mean, their business is imploding, you know, and they're one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. So their industrial complex is uh, we've been talking about this for a while is now showing some major signs of decay. You know, um, and if that keeps tracking that way, like you got to wonder why is it that the euro isn't stronger against the dollar? Well, it's because their economy is collapsing. Interest rates have nothing to do with it. You know, like there's a point where you know there's a carry trade that exists. You know, um, and that and that definitely is there. Um, but as far as the, the way yields are affected right now, there's so many other fundamental factors that it's showing you how much they're weighing on the on these economies and these currencies as well. You know, so I think it's going to be very interesting after next week. You know, we've we've had a trend now in the in yields now for what is it since the middle of September. So we've had a nice trend. You know, obviously yeah. they've been going higher. You know, um, the currencies have kind of flattened out over the last week and a half. And I think once that they we get through next week, we're going to establish a new trend. You know, um, for at least a good month or so going into fourth quarter. You know, just because you know currencies typically trend, and I think that. No matter what your take is on what happens over the next week and a half, it should start to set certain fundamentals in place. You know, that we're, we're going to have clarity as far as what direction, what path is our government going? Is the Fed going to go? You know, um, at least for, I would say, at least the next, like, probably three to, to uh, nine months. You know, so this can be very interesting. I think that we're finally going to see, you know, we've had a big range trade in a lot of the major currencies, especially. Like, the only movers and shakers right now, you know, the only reason the dollar index is still floating under its highs right now is not because of the majors, because they're going pretty much flatline. You know, the pound, the euro, even the, even the yen is only slightly buffering higher move highs, you know. But if you look at the Australian dollar, you know, that's collapsing. New Zealand dollar, that's collapsing. The U.S. dollar, Canada is totally rallying. You know, I mean, those things are, have all gone almost parabolic over the past two weeks, you know, yeah. relative to the, to the major currencies. So that's a big deal. It shows you that the majors are, are just basically, they're hanging in there, but the the influence now is coming from these other ones. And, that, and they, those countries have issues too. You know, everyone talks about how bad it is here. Guess what? Um, we have a global problem going on here. This is not just the United States, you know, so and everything is relative, you know, we're still the world's largest economy. So um, just as we start to fall back, you know, um, most of the Western countries, they're fa already falling and they're falling harder than we are. You know, I mean, Canada's yeah. debt level is skyrocketing beyond anything they can possibly imagine they control. There's no way they can even remotely control it the way they're going right now. Their, 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 their dollar, the Canadian dollar could collapse, you know, sometime next year. Literally, if they do not change their policies, their, their debt, they just can't even possibly. I mean, no one's even going to buy it either. And that's the problem, you know. So when you start putting yeah. things like that in the perspective, that's what's holding the dollar up. You know, it's not like yes. the normal fundamental factor. So the central banks, you know, remember I said how, you know, a year and a half ago, we're going to have the currency wars because of the central banks when they were raising interest rates. 
This yep. time it's not about the cutting. It's not going to be an aggressive cutting, you know what I mean? Because there's too many other factors that are going on that they're trying to juggle. And I think it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting to see how every, you know, admiral navigates their currency, if you will, globally. Oof. It's quite an economy across the globe, as you said, man. You laid out a bunch of great points. I appreciate it. And I was jumping through those charts when you were talking about them, man. And, and I don't keep track of some of those currencies. And that's why I love talking about it. Because, boy, those are rip-roaring rallies when I was jumping through, whether it was New Zealand, Canada. Can you stay with us for one more segment, Teddy? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Okay. We'll jump around, folks. We'll talk a little bit of crude. And uh, we'll talk some other things. We'll be back with Teddy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out his outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, folks, or some of those outstanding webinars he's got under the services tab. As we're talking to you, Teddy, we got a little move in this dollar down to 104.14 in the grand scheme. You know, we just got some volatility. Um, but I want to get your take on crude because, boy, you talk about Sunday night. It was a little bit of risk off. Things like right. seems like things things could have been a little worse in terms of you know maybe they were going to hit Iran's energy energy structure. What do you? And they did not. What do you think of crude? It's $68 right now. Um, you know what? 
right now it's below our downside breakout level, so I kind of have it looking to maybe dip down towards a $65 level. You know, I don't okay. think you're going to get much action below that. I think that's pretty much going to be the floor, at least until after the election. Um, and then I, I think what you have to do is really watch out for next week. So you got to remember that crude oil contract trades, they roll over every single month, okay? So for those of you that don't, are just that only watch the, the market but don't know anything about crude oil futures, um, there, when you take delivery on these, you know, for oil, you know, you're setting things out like into, ne you know, not just November, December, January, you're going all the way out into to a year from now, you know. So I think that you're going to see some major play in the spreads in the oil market next week, okay, um, okay. depending on who wins this election. And here's the reason why. If, if Harris wins, um, you're going to see oil back up at around $80 probably within a, a very short amount of time. If Trump wins, um, you got to remember he wouldn't take office until January. But you know that as far as people looking to take delivery, they're not going to be looking to take buy oil right now at sixty-five, seventy-five dollars a barrel when they know that within two months of him being in office, three months, oil will probably be trading around fifty dollars a barrel. You know, just because they're going to have, you know, and if if he does get elected, you know, all the companies are going to start gearing up for production. So they'll be ready to hit the ground running on, on Inauguration Day, you know. So so we'll look for that kind of a move next week. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. That crude store, pretty remarkable. We're going to be paying less for a gallon of crude than I have to pay for a gallon of water at Publix pretty yeah. soon. I can deal with that, man. Teddy, appreciate it so much, man. Have a great week. Look forward to talking to you sure. next Wednesday. Take care. Take care. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up.